thank you very much for the uh, invitation for this conference. <clears throat> I do thank uh, to my fellow member of the European Parliament, Mr. Katalin Ivan, for organizing the event, and also my warm welcome to my dear colleague, Mrs. Anna Zaborska, a member of the European Parliament for Slovakia, as she is a well-known uh, woman fighter for a rights, a real rights of women and unborn child. So dear guests of the conference, dear friends, it's a pleasure for me to be here with you today. Uh, I am uh, I'm from Slovakia and in my life I never understood and I never fo uh, focused on the questions like we are now here organizing this conference speaking about the dignity of life and that was a simple reason for that, as I was educated as a sheer atheist by my very communist mother and unbelieving father. And they never told me there is anyone else behind this world whose name is God with great G, who is a creator and who is giving life to every one of us. But God was so good to me that he gave me a sheer grace to get to, to get his touch and understanding, and I became a Christian. And I'm very happy to understand that there is God who gives life, and we are the ones who are supposed to save life, to spread life, to fight for life, and to bring the culture of life, and the life, um, not fashion, but the way of life that we want to uh, support life. So this is the issue we speak about and woman in pregnancy crisis it's very important and i was shocked to hear these uh, uh, informations you are given you are giving us now this pertains to the sanctity of life and the human dignity of mothers and children and it is also related to the well-being of families in europe the european christian political movement the european political party i am president of places great emphasis on human dignity. This is one of our political issues to speak about, to fight for. Human dignity is a special value each human being, being has. It is God-given and should be cherished. We cannot leave out any possibility to speak for. Therefore, each person's life should be protected from conception to natural death. And this means that help and support should be provided to women who face problems in their pregnancies. I am honored to be here today with women who overcame many of these problems and choose life. We as policymakers have a lot to learn from your experiences. and We need to understand what to do and what legal changes to push for. Nowadays, women very often are pressurized to terminate their pregnancies by having an abortion. They are told it is much better. They are told there are no side effects for such a uh, steps to make. This pressure comes from different sources. Many women, especially those coming from Eastern European countries, are under pressure from their employers. A recent report in the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe with the title, The Employment Rights of Domestic Workers, Especially Women in Europe, uh, there were made a special reference to these problems. There were amendments tabled by ECPM members. So this is the work we as policymakers can do and to fight for these amendments to be accepted. The adopted text demand that in all circumstances, pregnant working women are put under pressure by their employers to terminate their pregnancy. It further asks from European government to ensure that pregnant working women receive practical support during their pregnancies to safeguard their health and well-being and that of their unborn children. I think this is significant. Women can also be pressurized, pressurized to have an abortion directly from family members and indirectly from state social services that tend to present abortion as the only alternative. For example, a new law that is currently being debated in Iceland no longer asks for a compulsory meeting with a social worker before 
the abortion. I think many ladies simply would not get in enough information and would not make a proper decision because they are not given a chance. Therefore, women I dis are dissuaded from making an informed choice. Instead of giving them help and support, we push them towards a procedure that has proven physical and psychological risks. Many pro-abortionists talk about the right of a woman to choose. However, during pregnancy, there is also a developing body within her. I don't think a lady can say, it's my body, if she is pregnant. pregnant. She can say, it's my baby, but she cannot say, it's my body. There are two bodies. So, an unborn child is a developing body. Every mother who saw for the first time her unborn child on the ultrasound can confirm the special feelings this creates. To terminate the pregnancy means to terminate life. Therefore, it is not only a decision on her own body, but on the body within her body. If a lady can say, I can choose and decide, so she will kill not her own body. If yes, then the lady dies. I think this is very simple logic. If the lady kills a body, she needs to kill her herself. So to really promote this autonomy, safety and health of women, we must surely not promote abortion. Instead, we must look for ways to improve health care and to provide the means that will make it easier for a mother to choose to keep the child instead of aborting it. This is why today's conference had a special, has a special importance. So we can do more. Even here in the European Parliament, we can raise voice and propose more to save life. For example, I was a shadow reporter on in behalf of ECR, Group European Conservatives and Reformists, for the reporting on gender equality in free trade agreements. I made the proposal that we should concentrate not only on working conditions of women, but also on other conditions which improve the situation of families, importance of unpaid homework, care of members of family, etc. I tried here via amendments to put emphasis on the unreplaceable role of women in family. As well here as many other times, I proposed to delete the statement that we should support the abortion because this is a policy many times of the European Union that we can help the developing countries if they will support abortions. So we are telling them you can live better if you will kill more children. Kill more children, have better life. I think this is very wrong logic. In our legislation, it is masked as in wording access to services in sexual and reproductive health. And this becomes more acceptable for many people. I strongly oppose Istanbul Convention and the only and best solution in solving of domestic violence of women. Majority of such amendments were refused. Why? Do we really want to support women is a question here. Even more as a result of this report, we as EU try to push our idea of the life. Killing life is as standard for third countries, and EU is proud of it. I'm not proud of this support of death in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, about 55 million unborn children are aborted every year. There is a link to this statistic number. This means that each minute we lose 105 fellow human beings. This tragic reality is a call to all of us, policymakers and active citizens to join our efforts so that pregnant women who face difficulties or feel that they can't go on find help and support. With these thoughts, I wish every success to today's meeting that we can encourage ourselves, we will go forward. Thank you very much for attention.